bitterness and resentment is not what you think it is. It's really easy to think that you are bitter and resentful towards a narcissistic person in your life, towards your narcissistic family members, towards somebody who has wronged you, your ex. That's not what you're bitter about. That's not what creates resentment. Other people do not create resentment. Other people in our life do not create bitterness, no matter how narcissistic and abusive they are. Bitterness and resentment happens to be more of an inner dialogue. It is the worst form of being upset with the self. Now, I'm going to share more about this with you in this message so that you can understand the bitterness and the resentment that you might be wrestling with right now as a result of narcissistic abuse. But most importantly, what I want to share with you is what this bitterness and resentment is actually for. Too many people want to run around saying, oh, you're bitter, you're resentful. Listen, it's not all that bad. There's actually something that's taking place inside of you as a consequence of the bitterness and a resentment. It's a retooling, so to speak. We're going to get deeper into this. My name is Kevin, and this is The Royal We. Now, before I do continue, I want to let you know that I'm here to support you down in the description box below this video. You'll find access for one-on-one -on -one appointments with me. I take telephone calls as well as video calls through Zoom, FaceTime, and WhatsApp. So if you are in a pretty bad low place right now, you feel bitter, you feel resentful, you're struggling with bits and bouts of anger and frustration, not quite sure what to do with it and what it's even for, well, before you contact the narcissistic person and unleash all your anger towards them as if that's going to do anything, it's not. It's not going to help you. Head on down there, schedule some one-on-one -on -one time with me. Work with me instead. I will help you to understand what to do with the bitterness and the resentment that's actually beneficial for your life. In addition to that, I do have a coaching program. My coaching program is live and in person each and every day. I don't just throw books and reading material and videos your way and say peace out. It is a growing community where I offer you support every single day, Monday through Friday. In addition to the daily support, every Tuesday night is fellowship where we open up the Bible and we see what God's word has to say about narcissism and the growing narcissistic abuse that we see in today's world. Every Thursday night is Backstage Pass where I share with you all the background information on being a coach. So for those of you who have dreams and and aspire to be a voice crying out or to make a difference in any kind of way, consider joining the coaching program to learn what goes on behind the scenes. Now then, let's get into this. Bitterness. How many of you feel bitter? How many of you would like to not have to admit you're feeling bitter? How many of you are too afraid to admit that you're bitter? How many of you wrestle with this Bitterness, this resentment, you resent having been with the narcissistic people. You resent the way that they treated you. And it's easy to fall into this place of resenting them. I resent those people. How dare those people? And it's this bitterness. It's this anger. Even if you don't speak it out, a lot of you, myself included, can fall into this category where we're doing it in our mind. It almost becomes self-punishing. We don't even say it to the narcissistic people. We dream about it. We wish we could. But nevertheless, it's this bitterness and it's this resentment that is staying inside. And what's interesting about bitterness and resentment, unlike anything else, it's not like you're in a fight and you're suddenly thrust into bitterness and resentment. No, bitterness and resentment is this long delayed thing that stays with you long after the relationship. This in and of itself is evidence and proof that it's not caused by narcissistic people. It's not caused by your toxic family members. It's not caused by your nasty, vicious ex. That's not what causes bitterness and resentment. The fact that it stays within you, the fact that it lingers, the fact that you can have bitterness and resentment a year, two years, three years, five years after you get out of the toxic relationship is enough proof that it's not caused by the narcissistic per person. So what is it? Everybody say, what is it, Kevin? What is this bitterness and this resentment that you speak of, Kevin? I know this bitterness. I know this resentment all too well. I've wrestled with it in my own life. Let's look real quick at the definition of resentment because it's going to give us a hint of an understanding and a hint of a look as to what it truly is. And then we're going to talk about the benefits of it. Yes, there's benefits to it. But you got to hang on for that, okay? Resentment is even defined as this. It's the bitter, bitter indignation at having 
been treated unfairly. I'm going to say this one more time. Resentment is the bitter indignation. Indignation means like an anger. Bitter indignation at having been treated unfairly. Mm. Let's stop for a moment. Let's pause. What does it mean to be treated unfairly by anybody? What has to happen in order for you to be treated unfairly? Anybody? Anybody? Write it down in the comment section down below. What has to happen? You have to give, but not receive. You have to give for no return. You have to invest for no return. You have to serve without any reciprocation. This is what unfair treatment is. All right, so stay with me. Are you ready? It's not that they're doing anything, doing anything to you. It's that you're giving without receiving anything, creating this unfair treatment, which leads to bitterness and resentment. What's the conclusion? What am I getting at here? Bitterness and resentment is not about how you're treated. Bitterness and resentment comes from an overexhaustion of you overgiving with little to no return. Essentially, you're overgiving. You're overgiving, you're overserving, you're overstaying the welcome, you're overbelieving, you're overhoping, you're overdreaming, you're overtrusting, you're over this and that is the cause of the bitterness and resentment. It's a self-frustration. This is why it stays with you. This is why even after you leave a toxic relationship, you're left with the bitterness and resentment. Why? Because you're still exhausted. Because you're looking at all that you did, all you gave, all you tried to do, all you hoped for, all you, everything, and what little you got in return, it's no wonder you're upset. Because it is unfair. Now, but watch this. Is it their doing that made it unfair? Is it the narcissistic person that made it unfair? I mean, you could say that. But you could also say that it was your overgiving, despite not getting anything in return, that contributed to the unfairness. And I know many of you are saying, Kevin, I don't like this. I don't like the way you're talking because I did nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with giving. There's nothing wrong with loving. There's nothing wrong with doing. There's nothing wrong with how I, I, and I agree, there isn't anything wrong with that. It's a beautiful thing. You're beautiful and you're gifted and you're empathic and you're loving. But if you're not getting anything in return at all, then what do you, what do you think is going to happen? It starts to become this place where you're stuck in insanity, doing the same giving over and over and over again, expecting different results. And we all know that by and large, that's, that defines insanity. What's insanity defined by? Doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Many of you, myself included, fall into that. Being the good Christian, giving, loving, doing all this, expecting some different result from abusive, mean, cruel, nasty people. Listen, even light can come up to darkness and it can do whatever it wants. Dance and say, hey, when are you going to turn light like me? And darkness is going to say, I'll never be light like you. It's an overexhaustion. You've exhausted yourself. You've depleted your resources. You gave of your body. You gave of your finances. You gave of your love. You gave of your time. Things that you really can't take back. And things that were not met with reciprocation. Things that you were given no reward, no gratitude, no appreciation. You lost it all. The bitterness and resentment comes from the realization of the unfairness of that. And that now lives inside of you. Now, watch this. The bitterness and resentment is not a bad thing. This is the part I wanted to get to because I've experienced the bitterness and the resentment in my own life due to what? My own overgiving in a relationship, in a family situation, dealing with in-laws, trying to love on them, trying to show up, trying to go to their little parties and stuff and show up and be Mr. Happy. Hey, everybody. Hey, let's have a good time. Trying to be that guy despite them rejecting me, cursing and having a, some kind of a weird, whatever their narcissistic, we're all mopey and we're all angry and we like to fight everybody routine, right? It did, 
my presence did nothing, yet I still showed up. I still gave. It started to seem very unfair. I wrestled with the bitterness and the resentment as a result of that to come to this conclusion that I'm going to share with you. All bitterness and resentment is, it's a retooling. It's a pruning process. It's the moment where you become angry enough with these extended branches that are coming off of you that serve no purpose but to hurt you. There's nothing wrong with being giving. There's nothing wrong with loving. There's nothing wrong with being kind. There's nothing wrong with being empathic. There's nothing wrong with being a good listener. There's nothing wrong with being affectionate. There's, of course there's not. But if we're not careful, as a matter of fact, when we're not careful, these things in our life that are good things grow wild, like some wild mulberry bush, branches everywhere. And suddenly we've got branches of love and giving and all this stuff all over the place into territory where it doesn't belong, loving on people who don't deserve it, need it, or want it. Over here and over there, we've never pruned ourselves. We've never cut off these extended branches. But any of you who are good at gardening or any of you who work with growing plants or trees knows that you have to cut. You have to go through processes of pruning and cut off all of the extended dead branches that do nothing but weigh the, the tree or the bush down. It's a pruning process. The bitterness and the resentment is you retooling yourself. It's you taking a hard look at yourself saying, I need to cut some of these branches. And it's awkward, it's uncomfortable because you think these branches are still a part of you. You're looking at it as love, intimacy, affection, giving, serving, not realizing that these branches in your life have overextended themselves into the territory of going into territory where it doesn't belong. You're afraid that if you cut these things, you've avoided cutting these things because you're afraid it's going to change you. It is going to change you. It's going to minimize the dead branches in your life and allow you to really bloom, finally. And only give love, only give affection, only give your intimacy, only invest your time, only do these amazing things that you can do in the right place where it belongs without overspilling your branches into all kinds of darkness and weird places where it doesn't belong. Those of you who are experiencing bitterness and resentment as a result of a toxic relationship, I promise you and I assure you, it's a retooling process. You have to get angry with yourself so that you cut these pieces off of yourself. I hope this video makes sense to you. If you need a further deep dive walk into this conversation, schedule some one-on-one -on -one time with me. Like I said before, I do take telephone calls and video calls through Zoom, FaceTime, and WhatsApp. Simply go to the description box down below, open it up, and you'll find my contact information. Click on the link. It's easy. Set your one-on-one -on -one appointment up with me. In addition to that, the coaching program is going. You would benefit greatly from the daily support that's offered in the program. Row We Fellowship every Tuesday night, Backstage Pass Thursday night. And I'll be back with more videos for you right here on the Royal We. Before I do leave, check out one of these videos recommended by the YouTube algorithm. If you're brand new, be sure to subscribe, like this video, hit the bell notification so you don't miss any future Royal We content. And I'll be back with more videos for you right here on the Royal We. Bye.